you guys okay? You doing good? Yes. Hi. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Emma. It's so nice to speak with you again. Um, today's the last day of the year. It's the last day of 2020. It's December 31st. I think it's around like, why do I have no clocks in my apartment? It's 1230. Um, I'm still in my pajamas. It's like technically it's like a unicorn onesie anyway um we all know the days like after christmas and like before january 1st is just like a dead sleep where you become a couch so that is my only aspiration for today although i am just about to sit down and film my oh december wrap up which is exciting but i haven't vlogged for a few days so i have a whole bunch of reading updates and things to catch you guys up on as well i have a mini little Christmas day bacall that I thought I would just share with you right now um, since we're here and I did already film a very big large uh, I guess collective bacall that's gonna go up I guess probably after this vlog so I thought I would just show you the books that I didn't get around to showing in that video since I got them on Christmas day um, and yeah and I have some books I'm currently reading and loving and of course tomorrow is the new year so I guess this whole week I like kind of failed on my goal because at the start of the week I told myself I was gonna get my life together right before January 1st but I guess now it's just gonna be kind of the whole first week of 2021 getting my life together it should be a fun productive probably a little bit of a messy vlog because I have a lot of stuff that I've just put off because I was tired and lazy and not feeling like much of a human being but I really have to get into some sort of gear and some sort of plan and action because I have a lot of stuff coming in the new year and I'm so excited to share all of it with you guys um before I'll probably say a huge expanse of thank you at the end of this vlog but just today on the last day of the year thank you so much for this channel for helping me create it for helping me love it for helping me with ideas with your beautiful words with your advice with your hearts um it's just meant everything to me this year and it means so much so thank you without further ado before i get completely mushy on you all um let me show you some books that i got on christmas day actually like, i even have wings <laughs> this is the best thing ever it's extremely warm though and i got very warm very easily so it might not be the best choice for today but the first book i'm just so gosh darn excited about i don't really keep an eye out I don't think for releases or new releases or anticipated releases just because I just I just don't have that energy in me but this was one that one of you guys actually told me about so thank you this is the Phantom of the Opera the graphic novel this was released I believe early November in 2020 and my grandma got me this for Christmas of course I already read it I spent pretty much all of Christmas Day and the next few days after that getting through it it was so nice because it was easier for my little sad brain to read a graphic novel to close out the year and it was just wonderful I'm not sure if I'm completely thrilled or in love with the art style some of it I really love um, but I'm just, I would read anything that um, is Phantom of the Opera. Any graphic novel that comes out after this one, I would highly snatch up as soon as possible, immediately. This one, I believe, is illustrated and put together by Varga Tony, um, right? Yes. Who is a Hungarian artist and colorist. So, um, I love this. It was so good. I'm so glad that my grandma got this for me. Thank you so much, grandma. Um, of course. I loved it. I loved it so much. I'm so glad that like a graphic novel of my favorite novel now exists. I can't wait for more iterations. If anyone knows of any more, let me know. I had a pretty hard time trying to track down any and this was even hard to find. So yeah, but that is one of the ones I got. She also got me this book that I've been raving about since August and that is The Castle in the Clouds by Kirsten Gear. I just loved this book so much. I'm so thrilled. This is the absolutely stunning, beautiful hardcover copy. And then the inside is gorgeous. It's just, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. So if you haven't heard me <laughs> yell about this book, this is a young adult that I absolutely love. Um, it is about a hotel 
uh, that's like very fondly called A Castle in the Clouds. It's set in the Swiss Alps and Sophie um, is tasked with being, I guess, a babysitter and kind of the maid for the little children who come and stay at this hotel. Like their parents are rich people who are off doing, I guess, busy rich things and Sophie has to take care of them. So I loved it. I loved it so much. It combined a mixture of so many strange, weird, quirky, charming things. One of the most charming books I've ever read. I could definitely see this like it, in my mind, it just was like a Studio Ghibli film, I guess, if that kind of makes sense. But um, absolutely adored it. It was so charming. I'm so glad I have it. I highly recommend you read it in the winter or around Christmas because this book does contain Christmas within it and New Year's. Um, I think this book actually ends on New Year's Day. So it's just like a really nice winter fun romp through the snow um, and mountains and quite perilous things that go on in this book. So that is that one. This next book I found just sitting in my P.O. box. Um, there was no note with it, so please, if you sent this to me, let me know so I can thank you and give you a, a hug of some sort. I guess not a real one, but there we are. Um, and that is Swimming in the Dark. Like I said, there was no note along with this stunning book, so please, if this was you, tell me. <laughs> um, so yeah, Swimming in the Dark by Tomasz Jodrowski. Am I saying that right? Please let me know if I'm not saying that right. Um, I've never heard of this, but this is actually another 2020 release, which is exciting. And let me just read you the little synopsis. So, Poland, 1980. Anxious, disillusioned Ludwig Glowacki, soon to graduate university, has been sent along with the rest of his class to an agricultural camp. Here he meets, oh, I'm so sorry, Janus? He meets he meets someone. <laughs> and together they spend a dreamlike summer swimming in secluded lakes, reading forbidden books, and falling in love. But with summer over, the two are sent back to Warsaw and to the harsh realities of life under the party. Exiled from paradise, Ludwig and Janus must decide how they will survive, but their different choices risk tearing them apart. So, um, this sounds like it's gonna be amazing, and thank you so much, whoever mysterious Santa person you are. Thank you, um, I'm so excited to get into this, so that is Swimming in the Dark. This next book is from my beautiful friend Kira over from the channel Kira Foster. Thank you so much. She read this book, and she, I don't think she really liked it all too much, but it sounds super interesting, and that is Bunny by Mona Awad. Um, I've heard so much about this. I wanted to get into this book for so, so long. I guess this could kind of fit into the umbrella of Dark Academia because um, we're at a very prestigious uh, university in New England called Warren University and a clique of unbearably saccharine yet sinister rich girls who call each other bunny and seem to move and speak as one invite our protagonist named Samantha into their group. As Samantha plunges deeper and deeper into the bunny's world and begins to take part in their monstrous experiments, the edges of reality begin to blur. So, I've heard this is an extremely strange, complicated, weird little book to read, but it sounds very much like everything I would ever want. So, Kira, thank you so much. I can't wait to get into this. Um, I think it's going to be so fun. So, this next one is from Mary, from Mary Among Stories. Thank you so much. This is absolutely beautiful. This is My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier. It may shock you all <laughs> to hear that I've not ever read um, a Daphne du Maurier book because it sounds like everything I would ever want ever. I have this feeling that she's gonna become one of my favorite authors by the time I ever get around to reading any of her actual work. But My Cousin Rachel, how do I describe this to you? I think a lot of you guys have read it because a lot of people have recommended it to me, but. So orphaned at an early age, Philip Ashley is raised by his cousin Ambrose. Single, Ambrose delights in Philip as his heir, knowing he will treasure his grand house. But then Ambrose sets off on a trip to Florence. He comes back with his wife, Rachel, I think, but Ambrose is actually died. So we get Philip delving into this world that's now Ambrose-less and all Rachel, but he starts to get this feeling and have these suspicions that maybe Rachel was involved in Ambrose's death. So um, I'm hoping it's going to be super creepy, super gothic, have everything I ever want in it. I've heard so many good things about this book and this is just absolutely <gasps> beautiful. So thank you so much, Mary. I love you so much. So those are the books that I got on Christmas Day. I was so happy to open them all. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna love absolutely all of them, but um, I think what I'm gonna do now before the light gets any worse than it already is, I'm gonna sit down, film my December wrap up, and then update you guys on what I'm reading, what's going on, what my plans are for today and I guess the first week of the new year. Um, I hope you're all doing super well. I hope you had a safe 
healthy, happy new year. I'm completely exhausted right now, so I'm probably gonna fall asleep well before I see anywhere near uh, midnight, but that's okay, so. Um, probably one of the first things that I should show you guys is, as you can see, I changed up my little book nook, and now it kind of feels like an actual office or something of sorts. It's still very cozy. I, of course, left all my bookshelves um, where they were because I wasn't going to move those again, but I just put my chair back here in the corner. I like that, like, there's a little bit more room there, and then I'm slowly starting to fill these two walls up with prints, although, like, they are concrete so I can't nail into them but um, I need to get like some more command strips and stuff and then I decided to put my desk all right here and then it is quite um, big and open which is nice it feels like there's a little bit more room and then obviously I had to move the couch somewhere so I just chose to put it right here against this wall I'm still moving some things around um, filming <laughs> today and yeah However, something I'm definitely not thrilled about is this chair. Let me show you. The top, I don't know, I'll probably have to show you a different angle, but the top is literally like coming off of this chair. I have had this chair for like, oh gosh, six or seven years, eight years. Um, as you can see, like it's never been a comfortable chair. There was no way it could have ever been a comfortable chair. It looks like a torture device more than a comfortable the seating apparatus but the back is now like literally coming off of um the chair like it's so wobbly um it's so hard it's not comfortable at all i literally break my bones sitting in it um i have it because when my grandma moved from her house to a new location she was getting rid of it this came from her shed it's from my grandma's shed so she's had it for literal decades as well it is so old i don't think this is this first pandemic and i'm just it's time i think it's time for a new chair um that's one of the things i want to do this week is just get a new chair i don't know why i just don't buy myself what i need in my life but we're gonna get a new chair because i am gonna be sitting at my desk more and more now that i'm going back to school which is of course all online so i'm really excited i'm not sure what i want we're also in lockdown now which is another development. We've been in lockdown since the 26th, so of course I can't do what I normally would do, which is go to a thrift store, which is where I found this chair, my reading chair, which I adore with my whole heart. So that's out of the question, and um, I think I either spend money on a new chair or spend money on a chiropractor. That was an awful sound. I think, my good friend, it is time for you to go. I mean, not yet, because I don't have a replacement for you, but it's just so awful. Like, no one ever sat on this chair. It literally housed my grandma's, like, pots and spades and little shovels. So, um, that's the first goal this week. Um, and then currently on my reading chair, I guess you guys have already seen the announcement video, which is super exciting. Um, I did start reading Childhood, Boyhood, Youth by Leo Tolstoy. This is one of the books I'm currently reading, so I will definitely... Um, talk about this in a few seconds because I'm so excited for the book club. If you haven't seen the announcement video, I will post it um, up above and yeah, oh my goodness. And then right above my chair, like I said, I'm slowly putting together this wall. So right now I do have like a few things from you guys to put up. This one actually Lucy made me um, a while ago. This is like Prometheus um, and it was right after I read Prometheus Unbound, which is one of my favorite plays. And then I currently have still the quote from Rilke. And then this is a new print I got for Christmas, which I'm so obsessed with. Oh my gosh. It's Mary Shelley and her monster writing Frankenstein. Um, it's not by, <laughs> I think that says Robert Boyle. It's by Abigail Larson, definitely someone who I've seen her art basically all over. I love so many of her pieces. I just never knew who the artist was, but then Ashley from A Frolic Through Fiction actually posted a really beautiful um, Christmas gift guide kind of supporting artists and local, not local businesses, what am I saying? Online businesses <laughs> and small businesses and arts and bookish gifts. So I got um, this one of Mary Shelley. And then I also have another one that's actually a lot bigger, which I think I'm gonna put right here and I'll show you that too.
All right, so I got dressed, I finished my coffee. It is now almost 11 a.m., yes. <laughs> and I have a few things I wanna to do today. I definitely wanna do one of Kira's yoga videos from the yoga corner because it's been a few days since I've done like a session like that. So I really wanna get that in. And then I did end up ordering a chair because you guys know that was something I wanted to do to get rid of this torture device. So that is done. It won't be here for a couple of weeks. So my back will have to break a little bit longer, but that's ordered. I'm really excited. I hope it like comes okay because I obviously didn't get to test it or sit in it or anything like that um, but that is done and then of course as is the tradition that everything you own breaks at the same time if one thing breaks everything else looks at it and thinks oh I must now malfunction as well my laptop my poor very old laptop is hitting the bricks <laughs> um, he's dying he's not doing well the last video I uploaded it took me, I think, eight or nine different tries. I can't tell you how many times my computer has either like corrupted a file, wholly deleted a file, iMovie crashes every single time I open it. Um, and the last video I uploaded to YouTube on this channel took over 12 hours. Yeah, so honestly, it's something I should have done a long time ago, but I'm someone who just likes to wait and wait and not buy something until the absolute last second that like I need it or something like explodes and then I find myself without that something I need as is the case you've witnessed this week with the chair and the laptop and my sanity. <laughs> it's definitely not something I really wanted to do or purchase but like this channel means everything to me and obviously my computer is not okay. So I think it has to be done. It's something I need to do. So that's what I'm also gonna be ordering this week because very ambitiously and perhaps very stupidly, I've decided to build a computer. It's gonna be fun. Um, we're gonna see how it goes. I am really excited though to finally have something that actually works and doesn't um, delete all my videos. I can't tell you how many of my videos I've lost to that computer. It just like eats them. It can't handle the footage and so it chucks it out, I guess. But I'm excited, I'm excited. I don't think all the parts are gonna arrive for probably a couple weeks as well, so I guess I'll just have to really see if I can squeeze out a few more videos um, onto this channel from my poor laptop. I've had it since high school. Um, I don't know, I guess we're gonna find out. Wish me luck. I really hope this footage survives and you get to see this. Hi, hello if you did. We did it. Um, so that's that on that. Let me tell you what I'm reading. Yes, if you have seen Carolyn and I's announcement video where we announced finally our secret project, which is the Dickens versus Tolstoy, the great debates book club, we are reading one of either Charles Dickens or Leo Tolstoy's works every single month. Sometimes, of course, they take two months because they're quite large, but our first book is Childhood, Boyhood, Youth by Leo Tolstoy. There he is on the cover. Um, as you can see, I've started it, I'm loving it, I'm tabbing it with Caroline and I's um, pretty loose annotation system. Like it's up on our Instagram highlights if you'd like to join in, but basically the only tabs I've got here so far are pink, purple, and yellow. That's it. Pink is for stuff I'm absolutely adoring, yellow is for quotes I love, and purple is stuff I would like to debate Carolyn on. Yeah, so a lot of you have been asking how we're gonna debate. I think for the first few, we're not gonna be totally oppositional because this is the first book of the book club. We haven't read any Dickens yet um, for the book club. So I think the points that I've ticked off here to debate, they're parts that I don't think this book uh, is a strong book. What am I trying to say? They're weaknesses that I would like to debate and to try and say, hey, Tolstoy messed up here, or this wasn't so good. There are a few things in this book, seeing as this is one of the first pieces of Tolstoy's writing um, that I have picked apart and tried to be like, okay, this isn't super strong. Even though, to be completely honest, I'm absolutely adoring this book, I can't lie. Um, I think it's wonderful, and of course I'm not going to lie about it, I'm loving it. Um, but just to answer that question for now, the things I'm trying to debate are things that I don't love about this book that I think 
aren't super great. So that's kind of that on that. I'm not going to talk too much about this book, even though I probably already have, because I am filming a whole separate reading vlog devoted to this book. Um, it'll be up when I finish it. It's probably going to be extremely long because I'm talking in depth about all these points and stuff like that. So we're really excited. Um, thank you so much for all your responses and support. And so many people are joining in and we love seeing all your votes right now, whose corner you're in. And we're just really excited about it. So that's the first thing that I'm currently reading. I'm 43 pages through and I can't lie I'm loving it like I said I am of course reading childhood boyhood youth but I've also started a couple other books the first one is snow country by Yasunari Kawabata I started this on audiobook um, I'm reading this on audible and I'm really really like I'm listening to it on audible I guess I'm really really liking it I am now 34 pages through it's not a very long book at all um, I'm really enjoying it so much is just so beautiful and tragic in this book. This is a tragic love affair set uh, up on a hot mountain spring in Japan. And of course the atmosphere is just superb. It's extremely snowy. One of the snowiest places on earth actually where this book is set and it's just so nice. There's so much imagery that is just so beautiful because the introduction so brilliantly said that it says that Kawabata has been put, I think rightly, in a literary line that can be traced back to 17th century haiku masters. Haiku are tiny 17 syllable poems that seek to convey a sudden awareness of beauty by a mating of opposite or incongruous terms. Thus, the classical haiku characteristically fuses motion and stillness. Similarly, Kawabata relies very heavily on a mingling of the senses. In snow country, we come upon the roaring silence of a winter night, for instance, or the round softness of the sound of running water. And these like flashes of comparing things is just so nice. It's so subtle that like you almost miss it and you almost don't know it's there. And it's like something that thanks to the introduction, I'm really, really hunting down and finding. And it's just so beautiful. These like little flashes of things. Um, the opening scene where one of our characters, Shimamura, is on a train going to this hot mountain spring. It's just absolutely beautiful the way that like the window of the train becomes very dark and the lights of the train come on and it's nighttime and you can kind of see the passing landscape but then there's a woman sitting, I think diagonal to him and her face is also reflected on top of the window, on top of the imagery. And then it's like her face has become the landscape and it's just really beautiful. Like this whole book so far has been filled with stuff like that and we're not very far through, it's just, so nice but basically it's about Shimamura and he's from Tokyo I think and he goes to the hot mountains ring to see a geisha whose name is Komako and it's just about their tragic love story so that is that I'm absolutely adoring it I also started listening to A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab which is the third book in the Shades of Magic trilogy it's the last one obviously um just so that I could have something light fun I don't really need to pay a lot of attention to it doesn't require a lot of analysis or work and I also wanted to start off 2021 by finishing a series just so I feel I don't know a little bit productive and accomplished okay I also thought that I would set my Goodreads 2021 reading challenge goal um, as of right now because that's something <laughs> that I have to do that's productive and I'm excited about it so last year I set it 250 and they ended up reading 151 books I'm not gonna lie that was definitely like you know it took a little bit um and it's not something I really feel pressured by but I just don't think I want to set 150 this year because this year I really don't even have any new year's resolutions I just want to have fun and <laughs> be happy <laughs> is the goal so I think I'm just gonna put it to 100 books um this year because why not I think that's a good or maybe what do you think 111 100 books I could even do 50 but maybe let's just do a hundred and you know okay let's do it start the challenge <laughs> there we go I'm on track beautiful all right we've now come to the part of the day where I've exhausted all of, like the semi fun things on my to-do list and we just get to the really boring like uni slash adult stuff that like I hate doing and I don't want to do I love doing uni work when I say uni I mean like like admin uni stuff do you know what I mean like ordering textbooks or like emailing people or just getting like your tuition in order not a fun time but um it has to be done so i think i'm just gonna sit down put on some music and try to plow through it oh 
Oh, oh my gosh, my one course is up. Oh, guys. Okay. Maybe I can also tell you what the courses are. Which one is this? Oh my gosh. 19th century fiction of the individual is up. I love the cover image that my teacher chose. I love it. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm so excited. God, I'm gonna frick, I'm gonna cry. It's been so long since I've been in school or even on my university site. If you are new here, I've been dealing with a concussion since October of 2019. Still dealing with it as of the present moment. And here we are. I'm finally back on this website. I am terrified. I'm excited. I'm like really losing it right now, but I'm still trying to be like coherent and talk to you. Um, I'm terrified. I'm terrified that it's going to make my concussion worse. I'm terrified it's going to make me feel sick. I'm terrified I'm not going to do well at school because of this injury. Um, but oh my gosh, right now, in this moment, I'm just so happy to, to be back here. Okay, the course is, both courses that I'm trying to take are all online. Holy, the syllabus. Okay, I'm opening the syllabus. Okay, I'll tell you the authors we're reading, and then when the textbooks come in, I'll let you know what, what works they are. So we have Charlotte Bronte, Tennyson, Mary Seacole, uh, Thomas Hardy, for like the the big novels i'm guessing and then we have a lot more i really forgot how short of a time um english courses actually spent on one work and like how much you actually have to read i don't know if i can do this i think it's gonna be a really scary journey that i would like to take you guys on to see if i can actually get back to university i've been out of classes for a while now i definitely feel like all my knowledge and everything i had has gone out the window i feel like i don't even remember how to write or construct an essay, I feel like that's going to be really hard and I'm not really sure like how I'm going to do this. I'm not sure. Like looking at the syllabus and looking at the amount, the timeline of the reading and um, like the assignments and the essays due and the time frame, um, already the first essay is due the first week of February, um, which is actually soon and I don't I just don't know guys. I don't know. We're gonna see. We're gonna find out. Um, I'm just scared of like disappointing people I think or disappointing myself. I know obviously people probably don't care if I like, drop out of a course because of my health. Like obviously that's um, a thing. Like obviously that's completely okay if that's what has to happen but I just really don't want to like let myself down because this is like what I want to do. So, absolutely adore the image though that um, my professor picked. Look at it. Oh, I love it. But I'm gonna go for a walk. The sun is gone. <laughs> it took my motivation with it, but I'm gonna get out, go to the post office. I think I'm gonna have like a clementine, finish my tea. I need to drink some more water. Um, and that's what I'm gonna do. And then when I get back, I'm gonna try my hardest to try and edit my worst books of the year video because that's the one I'm currently working on and just see. How that goes because my laptop like literally freezes every time I try and like hit the play button or like cut the footage and then I just keep having to like shut shut it down and like force quit everything so yeah we're gonna see how that goes I have to say I'm an hour through A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab a little over an hour through kind of not enjoying it um I don't know if it's because like I read the second book back in, I think, when did I read it? June, I read it in June. And I don't know if it's because so much time has elapsed, but I'm just not really buying into anything that's happening. Like immediately when the third book begins, kind of the two things that, or I guess the three things actually that finish off the second book to do with Kel, Rye, and Holland. As the third book starts, it's almost like they're immediately resolved almost. And I'm like, well, what was the point of that then? Like everything just seems really easy right now and kind of strange anyway. So I'm not super enjoying it, but hopefully it'll pick up because I do want to finish that series and just, you know, have it done. And of course she begins a romance and a relationship with the young man on this ship. I believe he is the cap, is he the captain or the first mate? This book made me snort <laughs> with laughter because it was just so bad. Um, the writing was incredibly bad.
Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today is January 3rd. Um, you know what? I really wanted this week to be a productive, get things together week. And if I'm being honest, I've just been completely derailed. Um, it's 3.30 almost. And basically since I talked to you yesterday, I don't really want to go into it that much right now, but maybe later. Um, basically all of last night and then all of today until this exact moment. Um, I've just been receiving like an absurd amount of bad news and um, just really unfortunate things and things that aren't going well and like things that are throwing big wrenches in my plans, in my, um, like every part of my life, weirdly. I don't know why the bad news always comes at um, all at the same time, but I feel like every time a new year rolls around or at the start of a new month, you know, you always like to put more energy into trying to be productive or into trying to accomplish some things you want to accomplish or to feel good about your life or yourself or whatever it may be because it feels like a little extra surge of that push and motivation that you need that you're starting something again, like a beginning to try something new out, to try a new pathway out or something. Um, and I was feeling, you know, pretty good about that. Obviously I've been quite scared to get back to school, but I, I feel like very motivated to try and get healthy enough to do so. And unfortunately, basically just, yeah, all of last night and today, um, <laughs> there was some crying in the club for sure. There was a lot of crying in the club and in the shower, if I'm being honest, but like I can accept things and not do something to change this thing that I know I can't actively change by doing anything about it like I can just accept it and let this bad weight or whatever it is fall on me and like fully take it into my life and understand that but I'm not very good at not letting it affect my mood and not letting it affect other things in my life if that makes sense so like even if you can accept this thing, it doesn't mean that it's not still going to affect you. I'm not really sure how things are gonna go. Um, school is something that this thing affects and a whole bunch of these things that are happening affects, but I do think that I still wanna give it my best shot regardless of everything seeming to go wrong every time I turn around. Um, it's still something I wanna do. It's still something I wanna try. Being able to talk being able to talk to you guys and being able to just talk and have this channel and stuff and um, I'm not trying to complain or look for pity or anything like that because like I fully understand my situation and uh, what's up, It's ju it just sucks basically is what I'm saying. It's not something I can ignore but it's something that I want to try and power through and not let it stop me because I think I've gotten to a point just with everything, just with this like health uh, thing that's been going on for almost 16 months now I think. I've just gotten to a point where like Obviously, I'm still frustrated, grieving, sad, sick, um, but you get to a point where like you just, you're just done. You don't want to think about it anymore. You just want to go and do things regardless of how bad, you know, it's going to make you feel or whatever. You just want to live life again and you want to do things um, and you just want to like power through it and like forget about it and kind of just throw it all out the window even though obviously you can't do that. It's your own brain. <laughs> this chat has been pretty long. It is, what's today? Sunday. Today is Sunday. I didn't get a video up today because I, I just couldn't. I'm sorry about that. Um, you guys mean the absolute world to me and I just appreciate your support literally so much when things are going bad. Sometimes like a comment will pop up on my phone from one of you beautiful people or uh, so many, so many discord messages from you guys talking to each other, um, talking about things that are going well for you, raving about books, saying amazing things and creating friendships and just being really all around really cool, amazing, beautiful people and honestly just to have that there. Um, even if a lot of days I can't look at it with my eyes, it's just really nice knowing that. So I just really wanted to thank you because, um, YouTube has just helped me in so many ways and you guys of course have helped me because you you you, you guys are YouTube basically as cheesy as that sounds but um, this channel has just really helped me in so many immeasurable ways and especially in the situation that I'm going through right now so uh, I just wanted to say thank you like from the bottom of 
my heart. <laughs> anyway, today's Sunday. Um, I just had breakfast at 3.30, so, um, you know, that's a win. That's a win today. And I got to wash my hair and it feels very soft and it smells nice. And now I'm going to have a cup of green tea. I'm going to clean up the um, outer apartment space a little bit. I have been proof listening to my worst books of the year video that I think I was talking about. I wanted to get up today, but it didn't happen. So I guess maybe tomorrow or I don't know what this week. And then I need to go for a walk. I said I was going to go for a walk yesterday and go to the post office. That didn't happen because <laughs> all the bad things happened um, right before I was gonna go, so I think I'm gonna do that today. I'm listening to A Conjuring of Light. Uh, still, I've been listening to a little bit today. I'm not loving it. Like, I'm just not really loving it. I don't know if it's gonna get any better, but like the villain in A Conjuring of Light and I guess a little bit in the second book. What was the second book called? I don't know. Um, I just feel like he's not at all compelling. Like the villain and the whole main conflict. I'm just kind of like, what is the point of this? Like, what are your motivations? Why are you here? Yeah, if you guys are going through anything, literally no matter what it is, no matter how minor an inconvenience or how huge a landslide, um, here's a hug. Okay, let's do it. So I finished proof listening to my video and then I started to upload it and then halfway through um, it crashed and now my my whole entire edited video is gone it's all gone <laughs> so I'm back on the couch as you can see um, Good afternoon guys, so it is Tuesday now. This morning I slept in a little bit and then I managed to do yoga with Adrian's video. I think I'm a day behind, but it's okay. Um, I painted my nails and I'm slowly but surely mourning the loss of my deleted video and moving on. And hopefully I'll be able to get some more out to you soon, like I'm hoping, but Anyway, I have a few reading updates and then apparently this is the week of book hauls because I have, I think, three three more books to show you guys that I recently received. So I guess I'll just start briefly with my reading updates. I am still reading Childhood, Boyhood, Youth by Leo Tolstoy. As you can see, it's going really well. Um, I'm now on chapter 21 of Childhood, so I think I'm almost done. Childhood, yeah. Um, I'm loving it. I'm loving it so much. I found so much to talk about and to discuss and to debate with Carolyn. So it's just going really well and I'm really having fun filming my whole Tolstoy reading uh, vlog about this book. So that is that. I'm now 93 pages through Snow Country as well. I'm still really enjoying this. It's definitely one of probably the most delicately subtle classics I've ever read. I absolutely love how just like quietly devastating and hard it is to read. I think I said that this is about Shimamura who comes from Tokyo to the hot mountain spring and starts to talk to this girl he's just come for the second time to the hot mountain spring to talk to Komako. There's also another woman in here who Shimamura is very drawn to, her name's Yoko, so it's just Ooh, there's so much like suffocating and kind of like blanketing. It's almost like everything is muffled and muted by how much snow is around and it's also like every time Shimamura goes on the train um, to get to this mountain resort and this mountain locale, it's like he's entering into this kind of fantasy world where things have different rules, things take on different shapes and forms and things act quite differently and follow different patterns and it's just really interesting um, seeing it. So I'm absolutely loving it. I think I'm going to be finishing this one up probably the first but I have a lot more books on the go which leads me to this next one. This is actually I guess also part of the book haul and that is The Furies by Katie Lowe because this is our dark academics book pick for January 2021. If you'd like to join us this is our first book 
This is our first book pick of the year. The series is set, uh, I think it's an all girls boarding school and we're following Violet. She is the new girl at the school and she's quickly accepted, I think, into this elite study group that's headed by her mysterious art teacher named Annabelle. So I literally started this one this morning. I'm really liking it. I'm only on chapter two, which is about 24 pages in, but basically this novel begins with there's a girl found dead in the prologue on the campus of the school and then we flash back to Violet coming to the school for the first time. We learn that in this little town, I think this book is set in England, yes, the previous year or like I think a few months before she attends, what is the school called? Elm Hollow Academy. Her dad and her sister died in a car crash that she survived. So now she is at the school. She's just been talked to by the dean who's already introduced her to this whole idea of witchcraft um, that was occurring, I think, on the actual grounds of the campus in the 17th century, which is so interesting because I know this book is going to focus a lot on witchcraft and mythology, uh, I believe Celtic and Greek. I also still have A Conjuring of Light on the go by V.E. Schwab. I'm just loving reading so many books at the same time. I already, I always find it really fun to switch around and just hop to whatever story I'm in the mood for. So honestly, I have to say I'm about six hours through A Conjuring of Light. It's quite a long audiobook, but I am not really enjoying it. I'm finding it super slow, super repetitive. I'm not enjoying the plot or the villain I think I mentioned, um, and it's just not really holding my attention, um, and it's certainly the book I'm least enjoying out of those four because I'm really enjoying everything else I'm reading, but Conjuring of Light, I don't know. Like, I do want to finish it. I do want to finish the trilogy. I've come so far. It's taking me almost three years <laughs> to finish uh, the Shades of Magic series, so I think I should just do it and get it over with and see how it ends finally because I do want to know, but I just have to say I'm not, like, super impressed, so I'm hoping it picks up the pace. I'm hoping that, like, the Shop's writing gets a little bit less like dusty and dry because it feels very stale and stagnant, especially because the way she writes like fight scenes and very dramatic like physical scenes um, feels very like copy paste to me and I'm not a fan of it. That brings me to the two more books that I've acquired since I last talked to you. The first one is Room by Emma Donoghue. This was shortlisted for the Man Bucker Prize man booker prize in 2010 um i've been wanting to read this for a while i actually have this on libby on audiobook i don't think there's any holds on it so like i could pick it up pretty soon and read it i'm not sure if i'm gonna enjoy this book because judging from the synopsis it's not something that i would probably really gravitate towards myself but emma donahue is just such a famous author and i've heard so many good things about room and about so much of her other work that i would really like to at least try um, and dip my toes into Emma Donahue and since Room has just drifted into my life um, I thought maybe that's what I would do but basically we're following Jack who is a five-year-old and I think his mother he was born in the room which is how big is it it says how big it is 11 it's an 11 by 11 foot room I don't know I'm intrigued but I'm also a little bit weary and just kind of scared of this book but a lot of people seem to enjoy it so that is the first one and then this next one I've actually never heard of and that is Mistress of the Arts of Death by Ariana Franklin this is historical fiction set in England um, in medieval Cambridge actually which is so interesting and it says that four children have been murdered right so after that King Henry calls on his cousin the king of sicily yes history um and he asks him for his finest master of the art of death which is the earliest form of a medical examiner but they kind of get more than they can bargain for because who they end up with what is her name we get the mistress of the art of death adelia she has to conceal her true identity in order to avoid accusations of witchcraft and along the way she's assisted by one of the king's tax collectors i'm intrigued i've never ever heard of this so i think it should be interesting. Definitely going to add it to my historical fiction shelf, although now we have some reshuffling to do for sure. All right, good morning, guys. Today is Wednesday. I think I'm going to come on here, close off the blog. Blog. <laughs> the vlog. It's been a long week, and I guess it's... Has it been a week? I think it's been a little over the week, but 
Um, I think I've been as productive as I could possibly be to top it all off this week. I've just been feeling extremely sick with my concussion, um, more so than usual. <laughs> so it's just been really hard to stay productive, honestly, this week. But um, I'm really hoping that either by next week or the week after that's going to turn around because, of course, I start school in, I think, six days, five days. I think it's five days, I guess six, counting today. But um, I'm quite nervous for that. I know I keep saying that throughout the whole video. I'm sorry, but um, yeah, it should be interesting. I'm really excited though to vlog it and to finally be able to share with you some school content again because that was my favorite content to film. Um, I am really happy with how my painted, they kind of look like pills actually, these two fingers, but I'm quite happy with how my nails turned out at least, so that's good. Last night I was able to put up some twinkly lights in my little reading corner so there's a bit more illumination happening because before I only had like the moose lamp and it just wasn't cutting it, so now those are up. Um, I tried to hang my other artwork, the piece by Abigail Larson, to complement the Mary Shelley piece and it actually fell and uh, the artwork itself is okay but the the frame at the bottom chipped a little piece since i can't drill into this wall because it's concrete so you know it was a good way to finish off the week i think we all saw it coming okay there we go i just really wanted my like i'm really i really like this background i really like having my desk here actually um so that's something that i'm like so pleased about to come out of this week or last week was it the whole rearranging of this area so I'm really happy about that. Um, I think I'm going to be ordering computer parts, like, immediately. I said that my laptop crashed, iMovie crashed, um, deleted everything, so I'm really sorry I haven't been able to get videos out since, I guess, my Dickens versus Tolstoy video. Um, I'm also, like, very stressed about it because I have a sponsorship that I need to get up, um, and it has to be pre-approved, so I'm just a little bit frazzled about it all but um I know it's gonna be fine I know it's gonna work out and yeah I might see if I can squeeze out one more video although I am super scared of editing the whole thing again just to have it crash and delete itself like it did last time so that is something but um there's also good things and I do want to talk about that this week's been a reminder that I just need to take things a bit slower and not get super excited when I start feeling better um, and not do too many things, not try to go for longer walks or read a few more pages or do anything like that. Um, and it just, it's not a nice reminder to have, I don't think, but um, unfortunately that is reality. So yeah, audiobooks are just always my constant companion, and <laughs> to talk about audiobooks for a second, just before I close off this vlog, um, I'm feeling super chatty today, but I always use Libby. I adore Libby, although of course it does have the fatal flaw of making you like have to wait and wait for each audiobook, because of course when it's your public library, your local library, they don't always have it in, so... I have in the past waited literally like eight months to get a book, so I recently tried Scribd. You guys know I was doing that for a little bit, wasn't super impressed with it because it kept glitching and doing all this stuff, but then my free trial ended, but then I forgot to cancel it, so now I am paying for another month. So I thought I would just basically squeeze everything I could out of Scribd because I, I'm, I paid for it. <laughs> I didn't mean to, but I did. I forgot to cancel it. so. Um, I have a whole bunch of books basically saved uh, on Scribd that I want to get to in January, which should be interesting. And then, as if I didn't already have enough apps for audiobooks, I do have Audible now, which is so exciting um, because there's just like, it's just like unlimited power. And as, as someone who consumes audiobooks constantly, like it's my main way of just like listening and consuming anything, literature, media, whatever, is just audio. Um, and to have like that free, unlimited range, of course, Audible doesn't have everything. It doesn't have Childhood, Boyhood, Youth. None of the apps I have have Childhood, Boyhood, Youth by Tolstoy, but it is on YouTube. If you are wondering, I believe the uh, LibriVox uploaded it to YouTube. So it's there if you need an audiobook copy of our Tolstoy pick as well, just to let you know it's on YouTube. Um, but yeah, Audible. I've been listening to Snow Country on Audible. I have a whole bunch of titles saved because they have 
uh, ones that are like included in your membership so I'm quite excited about that because a lot of the books are ones that I have and I really really want to get to a lot on my shelf this year that is my main goal so I'm really happy about that and I just feel like I have like audiobooks coming out my eyeballs now it's a little bit overwhelming like which app to actually use and which app to choose to listen to them on but um, for someone like me who just like audiobooks is my constant they are my constant companion it's just been really nice especially this week when things have been going wrong and I've been feeling so sick just to have someone's voice tell me a story is always the thing I prize most of all when I feel like this so yeah let's talk about them to I guess wrap off this vlog wrap off this vlog <laughs> what enjoying it um I I'm always caught between wishing there was like a little bit more in here but then also realizing that that's kind of the beauty of it the missingness the denial the I guess bleakness of the story the kind of blanketed muffled uh writing and the blanketed muffled experience of these two and three people who we follow in snow country so I do realize that um I just don't know if it's entirely my style right now like I said it this book feels like the quietness that comes out of the snow falling if that makes sense you know that very particular quiet it's like one of my favorite sounds in the world that specific quietness um that muteness almost that comes with particles taking up the airspace and it's just absolutely beautiful so that's kind of how i would describe this book the furies by katie lowe i'm taking this very slowly because i have a lot of time to read it this is the dark academics book and i'm really liking it i'm very intrigued because violet our protagonist uh when she arrives at elm hollow academy um, she chooses to study English and classics, classical studies, Greeks, Romans, um, and that's, <laughs> hello, that is me. Um, that's what I'm studying when I get back to it eventually. So that's just been really cool, very intriguing to me. I'm excited to see how Katie Lowe writes that and like how much I'll actually relate to her purely based on her area of study. As it is, I'm on page, I think, 43 and she's just been kind of inducted into this group of Robin, Alex, and Grace, the three girls who form the Furies, of which Violet, I guess, becomes the fourth member. But we've already had a class with Annabelle, the mysterious art teacher, who's very provocative, I guess, and pushes her students to really explore things and kind of evokes this almost like idolized view in her students of herself, of Annabelle. So I think that's gonna go <laughs> catastrophically wrong, but, um, it's really interesting and I love, I always love in dark academia books when they mention so many books and paintings or whatever art form they're talking about because um, it makes me want to read them all and it makes me want to look at the paintings. For example, they mention Goya's black paintings, they mention um, a different piece of art called The Sleep of Reason Produces Monsters, I think? Childhood Boyhood Youth is going marvelously. I feel myself losing quite badly to Carolyn in this debate because um, I am supposed to be finding points to talk about to, I guess, not super praise it, but to kind of see where Tolstoy might be missing the mark or going off the rails a little bit. And I do have a few points for sure, but definitely nothing major. I'm enjoying it so much. Um, so that's that. A Conjuring of Light is just, I don't know, like Delilah Bard always gives me a lot of motivation and inspiration to try and fight off um, whatever mundane sickness or health issue or mental health challenge I'm facing because of course I don't have you know shadows and darkness and magic to fight off I don't have what she's facing but I do find and I know a lot of people find so much comfort in reading about protagonists especially in fantasy that are going through such horrific things of big magnitude to insert into their own lives and it does provide me with a lot like a wealth a whole host of like comfort and inspiration to try and take a little bit of those character traits and insert them into my own life even though of course what I'm and what probably we're all dealing with is invisible are things that you can't you know do really much about except change your attitude about and honestly like having someone like Delilah Bard or just the characters in the Shades of Magic series and any fantasy series for that matter is just a help even though I'm honestly not really enjoying a Conjuring of Light so <laughs> that's that um, and then I did start, oh my gosh, where else did I start? That's four books, one, two, three, four, 
Um, I think I started a fifth book because I'm just in the mood to read absolutely everything at the same time right now, which is fun, but I started A Touch of Darkness on Scribd because like I said, I'm trying to really take advantage of Scribd while I can um, before I cancel it at the end of the month. So I think A Touch of Darkness is a romance. I believe it's a retelling of like the Hades Persephone thing. I'm not too sure. I started it last night because I heard Ashley from Frolic Through Fiction mention it and I was like, okay. We'll give it a go um, because, of course, I heard about Fortuna Sworn from her and Becca. So I thought I would pick up their next romance. Um, I guess not really supernatural romance, but it's set in like modern day. It's set in like New Athens where Persephone is in the mortal world. She's obviously still a goddess, but um, she's taking, I think, an internship at like a journalism news place. So I don't know. Should be interesting. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to you know, carry it through or DNF it, but we'll see. So yes, that is a big long ramble of everything I'm reading. This vlog has probably been very long. Thank you for coming with me on this perilous journey that was this week. I hope your guys' time went a little bit better. Um, I'm still gonna try and be super productive and get and accomplish things that I want to accomplish for the rest of this week and next week. So maybe I'll do like a part two where hopefully everything doesn't catch on fire and blow up and go badly, but yeah so oh my gosh also i <laughs> completely forgot um lot yesterday uh there's 50 50 000, 50k is what i'm trying to articulate thank you so much um just thank you so much it means so much to me especially coming kind of at the end of this week and this um you know time where things weren't going well it's it's just so nice and i appreciate it so much. Um, I did post a poll on Instagram asking if you guys preferred another Q&A or something else and Q&A did win. I believe it's, I think there's like 60 something percent, but um, I think I'm just going to do both because I did have an idea and since there were still hundreds of people asking for something else, I think I will do both. So um, a Q&A announcement will be coming probably on Instagram and probably in my next vlog on YouTube soon. So yeah, thank you guys just so much for being so lovely and it's just, it's so flabbergasted, it blows my mind. So yeah, I think that's it for me for this week. I'm gonna go try and have a very nice day today, <laughs> take it easy, the sun is shining, which is nice, probably spend the day singing, cleaning trying to feel a little bit better, combat the dizziness and the nausea, nausea, I can never say that word. And um, yeah, so much love to you guys. Thank you so much. I hope the new newness of the new year is treating you well. And yeah, I hope you're doing okay. So thank you so much for watching. I will hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed, see you soon in my next video.